Temilade, why is the floor still dirty? Kemi shouted one morning, her voice echoing through the house. I am sorry, ma. I'll clean it again, Temilade replied, holding back her tears. The more Temilade tried to please Kemi, the more impossible it seemed. Every task she performed was met with criticism. If the dishes weren't spotless, Kemi would throw them back into the sink. If the laundry wasn't folded to perfection, she would scatter the clothes across the room, demanding that they be done again. Kemi lived a wild life in the bustling city of Lagos. By day, she worked a mediocre job in a small boutique, but by night, she transformed into a party queen. Clubs, bar, and late night gatherings were her domain. Her friends envied her carefree lifestyle, always eager to join her for another night of dancing and endless drinking. Mama, you worry so much, Kemi would say whenever her mother, Iriti, called from their village in Oyo. I am fine. I am just enjoying my life. Don't bother about me. Irati's calls became more frequent, filled with concern. Kemi, you need to be careful. Lagos is not safe for a young woman living recklessly. But Kemi brushed off her mother's warnings, thinking her life in Lagos was far removed from the simple, slow-paced village life. One night, after a particularly wild party, Kemi woke up feeling nauseous. She dismissed it as a hangover, but the feeling persisted for days. Eventually, she decided to see a doctor. The news was a shock. She was pregnant. Scared and confused, Kemi didn't know what to do. She had no idea who the father was, given her numerous flings. Her glamorous city life came crashing down around her. The pregnancy had grown that she didn't even realize it on time, and now an abortion felt so risky. She valued her life so much that she didn't want to risk having the abortion. I can't be a mother, not now, Kemi whispered to herself, pacing her small apartment. Thoughts raced through her mind, but one idea stood out. She had to go back to Oyo and leave the baby with her mother. Her pregnancy was a difficult journey. She hid it from friends and colleagues, fearing their judgment. The loneliness and fear ignored at her every day. She tried to keep up her party lifestyle, but found it increasingly hard as the belly grew. The months passed slowly. Kemi avoided going out, afraid of people noticing her condition. She spent most of her time in her apartment, battling morning sickness and dealing with the reality of an impending motherhood. Eventually, the day came, and after hours of painful labor in a small clinic, Kemi gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. Despite her initial fears, she felt a surge of love as she held her daughter for the first time. Well, I will call her a DBC, she whispered, tears streaming down her face. But the reality of her situation quickly set in. I can't do this, she thought. I have to go back to my mother in Oyo. Kemi packed a small bag took the little savings she had and boarded a bus to the village. The journey was long and filled with anxiety. Memories of her childhood flashed before her eyes, but she pushed them aside. This visit was not about her past, it was about her future. When she arrived in Oyo, the familiar sights and sounds of the village greeted her. It was quiet, a stark contrast to the constant noise of Lagos. She walked down the dusty path to her mother's house, feeling a mix of guilt and relief. Ireti, her mother, was shocked to see her daughter. Kemi, what are you doing here? She asked. Without a word, Kemi handed over the baby girl she has been holding. Tears welled up in her eyes. Mama, please take care of her. I can't do it right now, and I don't want to be a disappointment to her. Ireti's heart broke seeing the desperation in her daughter's eyes. Kemi, this is your child. How can you just leave her? I have no choice, Kemi replied, her voice trembling. I can't raise her, Mama, please, she said. Ireti looked at the innocent face of the baby and sighed. All right, Kemi, I will take care of her. Thank you, Mama, Kemi whispered, feeling a weight lift off her shoulders. 
She kissed her baby girl on the forehead. Goodbye, my ADBC. Kemi left. Iweti decided to rename the baby. You will no longer be called ADBC, which your mother had named you. You are mine to cherish, so I will call you Timilade, she said softly. As Kemi returned to Lagos, she tried to pick up the pieces of her life. She threw herself back into her old routine, passing harder to forget her pains. The city's bright lights and endless parties became her escape from reality, the one she had left in Oyo. Years passed and Temilade grew up under Ireti's loving care. The village embraced her as one of their own. Ireti, known for her kindness and wisdom, raised Temilade with the same values. The little girl was a bundle of joy, always smiling and eager to help others. Timilade, come help me with these vegetables. Ireti would call out. Yes, Mama. Timilade would respond cheerfully, wanting to assist her grandmother. They spent their days working in the small farm, cooking and sharing stories under the shade of the old mango tree. The villagers adored Timilade. She was known for her polite manners and willingness to help anyone in need. Mrs. Adebayo, their neighbor, often remarked, Temilade, you have a heart of gold. You're a beautiful young girl. As Temilade grew older, she started school in the village. She was a bright student, always eager to learn. Mama, look what I drew today, she would say, showing her grandmother her latest piece of art. Beautiful, my darling, Iriti would say, beaming with pride. Despite their humble circumstances, they were happy. However, life took a tragic turn when Iriti fell seriously ill. Temilade, then around seven years old, did her best to care for her grandmother. Mama, please eat something, she would plead, bringing a bowl of porridge. But Iriti's condition worsened. The villagers tried their best to help, but their efforts were in vain. One cold morning, Iriti passed away, leaving Temilade devastated and alone. The villagers rallied around the young girl. Mr. and Mrs. Adebayo, their closest neighbor, took Temilade in. We will take care of you, Mrs. Adebayo promised, hugging the weeping child. Living with the Adebayos, Temilade slowly began to heal. They treated her like their own daughter, providing her with love and care. She continued her education and helped out with chores around the house. The bond she formed with the Adebayos grew strong as she started to find happiness again. Meanwhile, Kemi, still unaware of her mother's death, continued her reckless life in Lagos. She had long buried the memories of her village and the daughter she had abandoned. Her days were filled with work and night with endless parties. One fateful night, Kemi met Tunde, a wealthy businessman. He was captivated by her beauty and charm, and they started to date. And Kemi's life started to change for the better. Tunde was kind and generous, showering her with gifts and attention. Kemi, you're the most beautiful woman I've ever met, Tunde would say, holding her hands. Kemi felt a new sense of security and happiness. For the first time, she considered settling down. After a few months, Tunde proposed and Kemi accepted without hesitation. They had a lavish wedding attended by many of Tunde's influential friends and colleagues. Not long after their marriage, Kemi gave birth to a beautiful son, Ayomide. The joy of motherhood overwhelmed her and she poured all of her love into her son. My precious Ayomide, she would cool, rocking him gently. With a growing family, Kemi decided it was time to hire a maid to help with the household chores. She wanted someone who could take care of the house and assist with caring for Ayomide, allowing her to focus on her new life with Tunde. In Oyo, news traveled fast, especially when it involved opportunities in the big city. Mrs. Adebayo heard from a visiting relative that someone in Lagos was looking for a maid. The relative described it as a good opportunity for a young girl to earn some money and perhaps even receive an education. Mrs. Adebayo thought long and hard about it. She cared deeply for Timilade and wanted the best for her. Maybe this could be her chance for a better future, she mused. 
She discussed it with her husband and they both agreed it was worth considering. Timilade, my love, come here. Mrs. Adebayo called one evening. Yes, Mama, Timilade replied, coming into the living room. Mrs. Adebayo explained the situation for her. There is an opportunity for you to work in Lagos. It will help you earn some money and you will be able to go to school there. Timilade's eyes widened with a mix of excitement and fear. Lagos, but what about school here and what about my friends? We believe this could be a great chance for you. Mr. Adebayo said gently, you will have more opportunities in Lagos and you will be able to attend a better school. After a long discussion, Timilade agreed, trusting the judgment of the Adebayos. Arrangements were made quickly. The relative promised to take care of Timilade and ensured she was placed with a good family. The day of her departure was filled with mixed emotions. The village gathered to bid her farewell, offering blessings and advice. Be strong, Timilade, Mrs. Adebayo said, hugging her tightly. Remember, we love you so much. With tearful goodbyes, Timilade left the village, filled with hope and a bit of apprehension about her new life in Lagos. When she arrived in the bustling city, everything was overwhelming. The noise, the people, and the tall buildings were a stark contrast to the serene life in Oyo. She was taken to her new place of work. It was Kemi's house. Welcome, Timilade. Kemi greeted her with a warm smile. I hope you'll be comfortable here. At first, Kemi treated her kindly. Timilade was given a small room to herself and a list of chores to complete each day. The work was hard but manageable, and Timilade took solace in the fact that she was earning money even though it was being sent to the Adebayos and not her. She found joy in taking care of Ayomide. He was a sweet child, and she loved playing with him and watching over him. For a while, life seemed stable and even happy. As the months passed, Kemi's attitude towards Timilade grew increasingly harsh. What started as occasional scoldings turned into daily verbal abuse. Timilade found herself bearing the bonds of Kemi's frustration and anxieties. The once warm and kind atmosphere of the house became a place of dread for the young girl. Timilade, why is the floor still dirty? Kemi shouted one morning, her voice echoing through the house. I am sorry, ma. I'll clean it again, Timilade replied, holding back her tears. The more Timilade tried to please Kemi, the more impossible it seemed. Every task she performed was met with criticism. If the dishes weren't spotless, Kemi would throw them back into the sink. If the laundry wasn't folded to perfection, she would scatter the clothes across the room, demanding that they be done again. Is this how you were raised? To be lazy, Kemi would sneer, her words cutting deep. I'm doing my best, ma, Timilade would whisper, her heart aching with each harsh words. The physical demands of the work took their toil on Timilade. She scrubbed the floor until her knees were sore, washed clothes until her hands were raw, and cooked meals while her stomach growled with hunger. Despite her exhaustion, she rarely got enough rest and rarely got anything to eat, as Kemi would often withhold food as a form of punishment. One particularly difficult evening, after a day filled with chores and scoldings, Timilade sat on her small bed, silently crying. She missed the village, the warmth of her grandmother's embrace, and the kindness of the Adebayos. She longed for the simple life she had left behind. Why did I even come here? She wondered aloud, wiping away her tears. I miss you, Mama Iriti, she said. Her only solace was Ayomide, Kemi's son. The little boy had grown fond of Timilade and would often seek her out for comfort and play. She cherished this moment as they were the few times she felt a semblance of happiness. As Kemi's cruelty intensified, Timilade began to feel more and more isolated. She had no friends in Lagos and no one to confide in about her struggles. The city, which had once seemed so full of promise, now felt like a prison. Despite the harsh treatment, she remained resilient. She drew strength from her memories of irity and the lessons her grandmother had taught her about perseverance and kindness. 
she found small ways to hold on to hope, whether it was through her nightly prayers or the rare moment of peace she found while caring for Ayomide. Please, madam, I just need a little rest, Temilade pleaded one night after a particularly grueling day. Rest? You think you deserve rest after the poor job you've done today? Kemi snapped back. Come on, will you go back to work? Temilade bit her lip and returned to her chores, silently praying for a better tomorrow. She knew she had no choice but to endure, hoping that one day things might change for the better. One evening, as Kemi sat in the luxurious living room, a wave of nostalgia washed over her. She thought about her mother, Iriti, and wondered how she was doing after all these years. The memories of her mother's warmth and wisdom began to haunt her, filling her with a sense of longing and guilt. I should visit Mama one of these days, Kemi thought, her mind made up. She hadn't been back to Oyo since she left baby Adebisi with her mother, and the thought of reconnecting after such a long time both excited and frightened her. The next morning, Kami packed a small bag and set off for Oyo. The journey felt different this time. She was no longer the carefree girl who left in a haste. She was not a mother herself, with responsibility and a life she had built in Lagos. When Kami arrived at her mother's house, she found it empty and run down. The once vibrant garden was overgrown with weeds, and the house looked abandoned. Confused and worried, she rushed to the nearest neighbor's house. Good afternoon, ma. Kemi greeted Mrs. Adebayo, who was sitting on the porch shelling beans. Mrs. Adebayo looked up, squinting to recognize the visitor. Ah, Kemi, is that you? She asked, very surprised. Yes, ma, it's me, Kemi replied, forcing a smile. I came to see mama. How is she? Mrs. Adebayo's expression turned somber. She put down the beans and sighed deeply. Kemi, your mother passed away years ago. Kemi felt as though the ground had been pulled from under her feet. What? How? When? She stammered, tears welling up in her eyes. It happened shortly after you left, Mrs. Adebayo explained gently. She fell ill and despite our best efforts, we couldn't save her. Kemi was devastated. She had always intended to come back to make things right and to thank Mama for taking care of her burden that she had left years ago. But now, it was too late. What happened to Adebisi, the little girl that was with her? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Mrs. Adebayo took a deep breath. Oh, you mean your daughter, the one you left with her? She doesn't answer the name Adebisi. After your mother died, we took care of her. She was a very sweet child, and everyone in the village loved her. But when someone in Lagos needed a maid, we thought it might be a good opportunity for her to earn some money while she go to school. Kemi's heart pounded in her chest. Where is she now, and what's her name? She asked, a sense of dread filling her. Her name is Semilade, a very beautiful girl, Mrs. Adebayo said softly. Kemi felt the world around her blow. The name echoed in her mind, bringing back the memories of the baby she had left behind. She collapsed onto the porch, unable to hold back her tears. The realization hit her like a tidal wave. The maid she had been mistreating in Lagos was her own biological daughter. I have been hurting my own child. She sobbed, the weight of her actions crushing her spirit. Kemi's journey back to Lagos was filled with a whirlwind of emotions. The weight of her discovery pressed heavily on her heart. She knew that facing Tunde and Temilade would be the hardest thing she had ever done. As the bus rolled into the city, she felt a knot tightening in her stomach. Upon arriving home, Kemi found Tunde in the living room, playing with Ayomide. She took a deep breath and called him into the study, her heart pounding in her chest. Tunde, we need to talk, she said, her voice trembling. Tunde looked at her with concern. Kemi, is everything all right? Kemi took a deep breath, struggling to find the right words. I need to tell you something about my past. Something I should have told you a very long time ago. Tunde's brow furrowed. What is it? Why do you sound so serious? Kemi began to recount the story of her reckless youth's life. 
her unexpected pregnancy and how she had abandoned her daughter in the village. She told him about her recent trip to Oyo and the shocking discovery that Semilade, their maid, was actually her biological daughter. Tunde's face turned pale as he listened. You told me you were an orphan, Kemi. You said you had no family members when I wanted to marry you, he said, his voice filled with disbelief and hurt. I know, Tunde, and I am so sorry, Kemi pleaded. I was scared and ashamed of my past. I didn't know how to tell you, and I couldn't face my mother for abandoning her with my child, too. Tunde stood up, running his hands through his hair. How could you lie about something so important? You've been mistreating your own daughter, Kemi. Whenever I come, it is one complaint or the other. Why? Tears streamed down Kemi's face. I never knew she was my daughter. Please, Tunde, forgive me. I made a terrible mistake. I know I lied to you. Please, I am so sorry. Tunde shook his head, his eyes filled with pain. I can't believe you lied to me, he said, his voice breaking. Please, I need time to think. Without another word, Tunde walked out of the study, leaving Kemi alone with her guilt and regrets. She knew she had shattered his trust and that it would take a miracle to mend their relationship. Kemi spent the next few days in a daze, trying to gather the courage to face Temilade. She watched the girl go about her chores, oblivious to the truth that had unpended Kemi's life. Each time she shot Temilade, the guilt gnawed at her, but she knew she had to come clean. One evening, after putting Ayomide to bed, Kemi called Temilade into the living room. The girl approached hesitantly, sensing the tension in the hair. Timlade, we need to talk, Kemi said, her voice shaky. Timlade nodded, sitting down cautiously. Okay, ma. Kemi took a deep breath, fighting back her tears. There's something very important I need to tell you. I went to the village recently and found out something shocking. Timlade looked at her with wide eyes. Okay, ma, what is it, ma? Kemi reached out and took Temilade's hand in hers. Temilade, I am your mother. I gave birth to you and left you with my mother, your grandmother, when you were just a baby. I didn't know who you were until I visited Oyo and learned about the truth. Temilade's eyes filled with confusion and belief. You? You are my mother, she whispered, her voice trembling. Kemi nodded, tears streaming down her face. Yes, Temilade. I am so sorry for everything. I didn't know it was you. Please forgive me. Timilade put her hands away, standing up abruptly. How could you? How could you not know? She cried, her voice filled with anger and hurt. You treated me so badly. You treated me like a nobody. Kemi sobbed, reaching out to her. I know, and I am so sorry. I was blind to the truth. Please, give me a chance to make things right. But Similade couldn't bear to stay any longer. She ran out of the room, leaving Kemi alone with her sorrow. The weight of her past mistakes pressed down on her, and she knew that winning back her daughter's trust would be the hardest battle she had ever faced. Kemi's world had crumbled around her. Tunde had left. The cold reality of her past action weighed heavily on her shoulders. She knew she had to make things right with Similade, but she didn't know where to start. Every time she saw her daughter, the pain and guilt felt like a fresh wound. Temi, please forgive me. I didn't know you were my child. Kemi pleaded one evening, her voice breaking with emotion. Temilade looked at her with a mix of anger and sorrow. You treated me like a servant, she said, tears streaming down her face. How could you not know? Kemi knelt before her, desperation evident in her eyes. Like I said, I was blinded by my own mistakes. I never imagined that the child I left behind would end up here. Please, Timmy, give me a chance to make it right. Timilade was torn. Part of her longed to return to the village, to the simplicity and the people who had truly cared for her without question. But another part of her yearned for a family, for the mother she had always dreamt of but she never knew. Seeing the struggle in her daughter's eyes, Kemi decided to seek help from Mrs. Adebayo. She traveled back to Oyo and poured her heart out 
to the woman who had been like a second mother to Semilade. Mrs. Adebayo, I don't know what to do. I know I made a terrible mistake and now I regret it so much. But Semilade is so hot and I don't blame her. I have made so much mistakes, one that I can never undo. Kemi confessed. Mrs. Adebayo listened patiently, her eyes filled with compassion. Kemi, you need to show her that you are sincere. Action speaks louder than words. She needs to see that you're willing to change. Kemi nodded, wiping her eyes. I will do anything to earn her forgiveness. When Kemi returned to Lagos, she found Temilade sitting quietly in the living room, lost in thought. She approached her cautiously. Temilade, I went to see Mrs. Adebayo. She wants to talk to you, Kemi said softly, holding out the phone. Temilade took the phone, her hands trembling slightly. Hello, Mama, she said quietly. Temilade, my daughter, how are you? Mrs. Adebayo's warm voice came through the phone. I'm fine, Ma, Temilade replied, her voice wavering. Mrs. Adebayo took a deep breath. Temilade, I know you are hot and confused right now, but your mother is truly sorry for what she has done. She came to see me and put her heart. She wants to make things right. She is not my mother, Temilade blotted. Please, just calm down. Temilade listened. Tears streaming down her face. But she lied to me and she treated me so bad, like a commoner. I know, my darling, but people make mistakes. What matters is that she is trying to change. Please give her a chance to prove herself, Mrs. Adebayo urged gently. After a long pause, Temilade nodded. Okay, Mama, I'll try. Reluctantly, Temilade agreed to stay. I'll give you a chance. But it won't be easy to forget everything, she said, her voice trembling with a mixture of hope and doubt. Kemi nodded, understanding the gravity of the situation. She began making changes around the house, starting with the way she treated Timilade. She no longer gave her menial tax, but instead included her in family activities. She made an effort to spend time with her, learning about her likes and dislikes, and listening to her stories about life in the village. One day, Kemi decided to take Temilade shopping. Let's buy you some new clothes, Temi. You deserve every bit of it, she said with a smile. At first, Temilade was hesitant, but she soon found herself enjoying the outing. Kemi bought her beautiful dresses, shoes, and some books. It was a small step, but it helped to bridge the gap between them. As the days turned in two weeks, Temilade slowly started to open up. She shared memories of her grandmother, the village, and the Adebayos. Kemi listened intently, feeling a mix of guilt and gratitude for the people who had cared for their daughter. But why did you leave me? Temilade asked one evening, her voice filled with the innocent curiosity of a child seeking answers. Kemi took a deep breath. I was young and scared. I made a terrible decision. And I have regretted it every day since. But I'm here now and I want to make it up for the last time. Temilade nodded, absorbing her mother's words. It would take time to heal the wounds. But for the first time, she felt a glimmer of hope that things might get better. Mrs. Adebayo's words echoed in her mind, reminding her to be patient and understanding. Kemi knew that any Temilade's trust would not be easy. She dedicated herself to treating Temilade with love and respect she deserved. Each day, she found small ways to show her sincerity and commitment. She finally enrolled her in school and bought her all the necessary materials she needed to excel. She started involving her in her business, teaching her about the operations and allowing her to take on responsibilities. I want you to learn everything, Temi. One day, this could be all yours, Kemi said, hoping to inspire confidence in her daughter. Temilade hesitated at first, but gradually began to enjoy the work. She excelled in her studies and appreciated her mother's efforts and the chance to learn new skills. They spent time together in the evenings, discussing the day's events and sharing stories. Meanwhile, Tunde remained a constant presence in baby Ayomide's life. Although he and Kemi were separated, he often visited, ensuring that his son felt loved and supported. He also made an effort to be kind to Timilade, understanding the delicate situation. 
Kemi, how are things with Temilade? Tunde asked during one of his visits. It's getting better, Tunde. She is starting to trust me more. Kemi replied, her face lighting up with a hopeful smile. Kemi's business flourished and she ensured that both Temilade and Ayomide were well taken care of. Despite the lingering guilt of her past action, Kemi was determined to move on and create a better future for her family. Over time, Temilade began to forgive her mother. The wounds of the past were deep, but Kemi's constant effort to show her love and dedication gradually healed those scars. They spent more time together, sharing laughs and creating new memories. One afternoon, while they were cooking together, Temilade looked at her mother and said, Mom, I see how hard you're trying. Thank you for not giving up on us. Kemi's eyes filled with tears. Temilade had called her mom for the first time. Thank you, Temi, for giving me a chance. I promise I will never let you down again. Their bond grew stronger with each passing day. Kemi made sure to celebrate every milestone, no matter how small. They went on family outings, visited parks, and enjoyed simple pleasures like ice cream on a hot day. Temi also began to excel more and more in school. She excelled in her studies and made a lot of new friends. She felt more secure and loved, which reflected in her confidence and happiness. Kemi often checked on Mrs. Adebayo, sending her support both in cash and kind. One day, she received a call from Mrs. Adebayo. How is Temilade doing? She asked. She is doing wonderfully well, Mama Adebayo. Thank you for everything you did for her, Kemi replied gratefully. I'm glad you chose to do the right thing. Even if it cost you your marriage, you are doing amazing, Mrs. Adebayo said, her voice warm with approval. Kemi also worked on her relationship with Sunday. Though they remained separated, but they managed to co-parent Ayomide effectively and peacefully. Kemi learned that true love required patience, sacrifice and commitment. Though the guilt of her past lingered, she found solace in the love she shared with her children, working every day to be the mother that they deserved. She vowed never to let her daughter suffer again, cherishing every moment they had together. The future, once clouded by mistakes, now shone brightly with the promise of a better tomorrow. The story teaches that redemption and forgiveness are possible even after making mistakes. It emphasizes the importance of taking responsibility for one's action seeking forgiveness and making sincere efforts to change. Additionally, it highlights the importance of treating everyone kindly, whether we know them or not, as we never truly understand their background or struggles. It also shows that action speaks louder than words and that it is never too late to make things right. Thanks for watching this captivating story on African stories and folk tales. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more stories. Thank you.